Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm bringing you guys a team build that I've been building for quite some time and uh, I want to share it with you guys because I know a lot of you guys still are looking for some players for your team and I think I have the perfect team for you guys. So this team build is going to be a little bit different. I know usually I say, oh, this is going to be a two mil team build or a one mil team build, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to have two alternate team builds. I'm going to have one that is the most expensive one, which obviously includes all the players, as well as one team build that only showcases the players that I extremely like to use, uh, just so you guys can save some money just in case you already have some teams built. But before we start, I want to quickly show you the stats. So I think with every team build, I want to at least show you guys the stats for it, just because I feel like you guys need a little bit of proof that I am playing okay with this team. I'm not just losing and bringing you guys out a video, right? But as you can see here, it's called the Free Pack Team. I didn't exactly change my name from uh, the wager match I faced against Tactics. But as you can see, I got a quite a big win streak already. 5 nothing, 4 nothing, uh, 3 nothing games. And it's just uh, unreal, this team. Uh, and, you know, I did get a couple losses. I had to do quite a few changes. I wish that I could uh, give you guys a screenshot of how my team looked before. But as you can see here, I played almost 20, 30 games. About 20 games, just about. And as you can see, I, I was winning a couple games, I was losing a couple games, and I was not happy with the team, and I kept changing it to the point where I think I've won enough games to show that um, I've been I've won the Division 1 title uh, almost flawlessly, uh, other than this one loss, which there's nothing I could really do. Uh, but anyways, the team has been built. I want to show you a couple of the really good players that I have, as well as the full team build, so let's get on to it. Alright guys, so we're going to get into the first team build here, and what this team build includes is all the players that have been on my team. This is the real team that I play with, and I just want to let you guys know that you should keep on watching this video. I want to bring you guys out the strategies. Uh, I will have the time frame in the description box below so you can click it, but the team strategies I feel like are just as important as the team itself. They go hand in hand with each other, and this team is just absolutely amazing. So, let's go right into it. This is the first team build with every single player. And here is the team build, guys. As you guys can see, uh, there are a lot of player of the game cards. There are a lot of special cards. A lot of everything on this team in terms of uh, variety. But uh, one thing I want to make clear is that uh, you guys can go ahead and switch out these players for their base cards or a lower end special card. I understand most people don't have the amount of coins to just go ahead and uh, spend 2 million coins on a team build. And I know uh, I did some uh, rough estimates on how much this team's worth. It's close to 2 mil. Uh, it's definitely not a cheap team build, but I will also provide in the end of this video a cheaper way to build this team. So for those guys that have less coins, at least you guys can go off with that uh, uh, guide or tutorial, I guess. But instead of explaining every single player as well on how they do, every single player has their strengths and weaknesses. It's a matter of putting them on the right lineup, which makes them play to their max potential. Having said all that, let's go right into the lineup. So Pavel Burry, Boyle, and Voracek. Um, before I didn't have Voracek on this lineup, but I had Burry and Boyle together, and it was okay, I had, it, I had them playing with Phil Kessel, but I felt like Phil Kessel was just not a strong enough player to play with Boyle and Burry, especially when Burry is such a small player. Uh, I actually got a Voracek from EA, and I thought, you know what, I might just test him out and let you guys know how he plays, and so far, Voracek, maybe one of the faster players on my team, one of the fastest. Uh, not as fast as Pavel Burry, uh, but definitely has got some speed on him. And he just finishes the job every single time on the right wing when I need him to do it. And this is what makes this line so complete. The Burry, Boyle, and Voracek line. One of my favorites and can compete against any first line. Taves, Crosby, Ovechkin. I've been be I was able to cancel out most of their players in terms of these guys right here. So enough talking about the first line. Let's go into the second line here. And this one is a little bit different as well. I know there's a lot of guys that just like playing with left-handers, but sometimes you have to try out a line full of right-handers as well. Uh, and all these guys are right-handed. Claude Giroux, Eric Lindros, Yari Curry, a lot of obviously legends uh, right off the bat. But these guys just play so well together. They're always in position. If you know how to cycle the puck on the right side of the offensive zone, you will do very well in terms of those one-timers right in the slot when you pass out from the right side to the middle. So we're going into the third line here, and I just want to say this, first of all, that I've been playing a little bit different. I've been having a little bit of a couple strategies here in terms of how I play out my lineups. My first two lineups are only for offense, in terms of getting things done and scoring goals. And my third and fourth line is just for PKing and for just 
whenever my first couple lines are tired, these are the lineups to just fight against some of the really good lineups they have. And this really helps diffuse some of those situations where you don't have a stacked team like the other team, but you can still uh, score a couple goals here and there and make sure it's at least a little bit even, right? Uh, so the third line is a little bit different. As you can see, we got Phil Kessel, Tavares, and Hagelin. So my idea for building this team was I needed some speedsters that I could rely on and make sure that if I have a team that I'm facing against that has some really good players, these guys will not let me down. Even if they did have Ovechkin or Taves, this team would not perform too bad. Uh, but then again, there's not many people that have Ovechkin on their third line. That's what the Boyle and Burry and Voracek line is for. It's, I love to play the cycle game. I'm not sure how many guys watch my hot roulette. But Carl Hagelin gets into those boards. Make sure that the puck stays into the zone. While Phil Kessel is just there for the one-timers. And Tavares is just there to back Hagelin up in terms of any situations where I need him in. Uh, penalty kill. He doesn't have the best face-offs, I, I have to say. But then again... He is still an all-round, really amazing player. Fourth line here is a little bit different as well. I need a strong fourth liner that I know I can re rely on for PKing. And uh, Brian uh, Marty Hansel, as you guys know, six foot six, two hundred and thirty pounds. Just a guy that in the defensive zone can get some big hits on there. You don't have to worry too much about him whenever he's on the ice. Darren Helm, um, honestly, I think he's better than Carl Hagelin. And he's just such a speedy player, one of the best centermen in the game. And for his price, I think it's about 130. You cannot go wrong with him. Trust me, you guys got to pick him up. Sorry, I know I'm editing these out, but I got to catch my breath here. So much talking. But um, Marion Hosa, definitely a player that I don't exactly mind getting rid of. He doesn't score me many goals, but his defensive game is on point. He's more of just the all around defensive player that you can rely on. And that's what I like about this fourth line. It just, they don't usually score goals, but it just works, this lineup. Alright, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but I want to give you guys some strategies on how to use these guys to the max potential and have them on the ice as much as you can with the most amount of energy. So, my first two lines are just to get things done in terms of scoring. Uh, Pavel Burry, Boyle Voracek, Curry, Lindros, and Drew. So, how I designed it is, first line is more of just trying to cycle the puck on the left side and try to get a shot in through the middle while the second line is more of cycling on the right side and trying to get those uh, middle passes and just trying to get those one-timers off and this is what makes it so effective is not many people know how to defend against right-handers and once you throw off their strategy or throw off their game uh, you can really capitalize on trying to score some goals with the first and second line so what I like to do is I like to get these guys out as much as possible you only have to worry about them for 20 minutes before that period switches and they're all with back to max energy. I don't think their fatigue goes up. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but once the period is over, I just restart my same strategy. So my third line and fourth line, I only put out once my first and second lines have dropped down to half energy. Third and fourth line should only be meant for penalty killing because I do not want Tavares tired when I have a penalty, right? Uh, same with Darren Helm. I don't want him to be tired when I need to take a, a major face-off in the final seconds and I cannot win it uh, when they're all fatigued. So third and fourth line you want to use wisely only when you need to spice things up in terms of either penalty killing or if say you're on a 5-on-5 in situation where the first and second line aren't doing it, the third line will give you that speed, the fourth line will give you that speed to get you maybe a couple of goals here and there. And that goes same for the defense as well. The thing is, I like to have all my really top guys in the first and second line. So what I do is, 5-on-5, five five, Duncan Keith and Shea Weber are almost out every single time. And Ryan McDonough and Petrangelo are only for my penalty kill lines. Things like that. I like to keep those guys nice and recharged all the time. And I'll show you guys my penalty kill. Uh, these are the first guys to be out on the penalty kill. And these guys always have full energy. So it's a pretty nice way to do it as well. Also, one more thing. The center to right wing is broken. You want to put the centerman on the right wing spot, and that's why Darren Helm is on the right wing spot. Same with John Tavares. These guys will these guys will still take the face off, even though uh, the positions are messed up. All right, so we talked a lot about the offense, but now I want to move into the defense, and obviously it's very expensive. I'm going to show you an alternate team build for the defense as well. But as you can see here, Duncan Keith, Ben Bishop, and Shea Weber, and then we also got Victor Hedman, Nicholas Lidstrom, uh, Ryan McDonough, and Petrangelo. So um, I've never really liked using Shea Weber. Honestly, these are one of the players I could replace on the team. He has an amazing poke check, but other than that, he is sometimes not fast enough for me. 
but he's a very good catalyst with Duncan Keith. I don't know what's with him, but Duncan Keith is extremely fast, gets back on the play just like Shea Weber does, except that he gives me that extra line of security, and that's why I like using Shea Weber on my team. Also, he's on my Hot Roulette. I'm not sure if it's Hot Roulette. It's on my uh, Ultimate Pack Squad team, and uh, I never really liked playing with Shea Weber. I decided to put Duncan Keith with him, and so far, it's such an effective uh, defender lineup that most people cannot get by it. Uh, ben Bishop, like you guys know, it's a cheat code. You guys can replace it with the 88 Ben Bishop. Honestly, it's no different. It's only one point higher than his base card, and his base card's only 10k. I think the special item for this one's about 150 or 100 or 200k. So uh, if you want a cheaper alternative, just stick with the 88 Ben Bishop. You can't go wrong. Uh, players that I want to try out very, um, very badly in this game, I guess, that I've not done for a while. Nicholas Lindstrom and Victor Hedman. So I got Victor Hedman in um, one of those packs from before my ultimate pack pull team. And I've been putting a lot of players beside him. I put, um, uh, who was I? I put Slava Voinov with him before I changed him to right defenseman. I put him with uh, Bo Meester. I put him with so many people. And it's just, I couldn't find the right match with Victor Hedman. And uh, what I needed, I think, was a really good defenseman to play with him. That could uh, be a good catalyst with him. And what I found was Nicholas Lidstrom has an amazing defensive ability. It's just the 96 overall does prove to be pretty good. And especially with Victor Hedman. It's like that defensive lineup is just so powerful. Not many people can get around it. So I really hi highly recommend Nicholas Lidstrom as maybe even the Legend card. You don't necessarily need to pick up the Milestone one. But the Legend one would probably do just as fine. And for the third defensive lineup, as you can see, we got Ryan McDonough. The Stanley Cup overall edition. As well as the Petrangelo that uh, I've always liked using. He's always got a really good reach. Six foot three, 201 pounds. Uh, I needed someone a little bit faster to play with him, and Ryan McDonough was the perfect one. I just felt like his base card was a little bit slow. I was a little bit tired of boosting, and this Stanley Cup edition is a tiny bit better than the first base card Ryan McDonough, and that's why I have it with Petrangelo. Uh, Petrangelo, sorry. And it's just, uh, these guys work well together. Not much to say other than a very um, shut down defensive core. So here is the full team build. I'm now going to go into showing you guys my most favorite players from this team. If you guys don't have as many coins and you just want to look for building, getting a couple good pieces to your team, now I'm going to show you guys some more players. Alright, so here is the alternate team build. I know uh, there's a lot of the old cards from before my last team build, but I'm not going to go out and just buy a 100k player just to fill out this team a little bit more. But uh, what I'm going to say is, first of all, Brian Boyle, don't be afraid to get the base card version of him. Same with Voracek, get a special card edition, maybe the 92 or 91 overall version of him if you want to save some coins. Pavel Bury, definitely a player you got to pick up. He's so fast on the ice. Claude Drew, er Eric Lindros, uh, very great on the face-offs. Try him out. Same with Claude Giroux. Phil Kessel and Carl Hagelin, two speedsters that uh, honestly any center could play alongside with them. And then Marty Hansel, I know there's a player of the game one for only going for 40,000. Darren Helm, 130,000. You gotta pick him up. As well as the defense here. Duncan Keith, Ben Bishop. The only player I took out of the defensive spot is Shea Weber. I feel like Shea Weber can honestly be replaced by Dustin Bufflin or someone in that caliber of that size as well. Uh, ben Bishop, 89 overall. You can swap out with a base card so you don't have to waste 200,000 coins. Nicholas Lidstrom, you can go for the Legend card, the 94 overall one, if you want to save some more coins as well. Victor Hedman, a lower end one, you can get of him the base card. Petrangelo, if you have 30, 40,000, these are one of the first defenders you should be getting anyways. He is such a solid third line player, just you cannot go wrong with him. Ryan McDonough, honestly, you can go for the 89 edition, you won't see too big of a difference, but I do like the 91 overall more than the 89 version of him, of course. So here are just the players I highly recommend, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right into the team strategies. And like I said, these things go hand in hand to each other, and I want to guys, I want to show you guys how they look so you guys can replicate them for yourself and try out this team build for yourself, and maybe uh, you'll win a couple games just like me. So, 4 check, 1-2-2, two, two, aggressive, neutral zone, 1-4, and uh, neutral zone uh, maxed all the way to 6. I like them to attack with max aggressiveness. Uh, same with full attack, offensive pressure. High pressure for defensive pressure. I'm not a guy that just likes to sit around and wait for people to set up in my zone. If you cannot get by me by my blue line, I'm not going to let you. That's how I play. Uh, defensive strategy, tight point. Uh, just making sure I block those shots, uh, especially when I'm on the penalty kill. Passive box uh, as well. That's more of... Actually, tight point is more for 5-on-5. Five five. Passive box is more for, um, I guess, defending. Getting those blocks on. 
because a lot of the time if you put it on um say large blocks if they beat you on the outside you're screwed they're gonna take a slap shot from uh, from the point and they're gonna get get a tip on with a passive box they create a tighter box in the zone like it says in the description and uh if you miss it with one guy at least another guy can get to him before he gets a shot on that's why you always use passive box in the penalty kill so i love it okay power play overload honestly i don't think there's too big of a difference you guys can choose what you like to do but overload is the way i like to do it cycle the puck pass it to the point pass pass it to the middle and just take a shot and see if i can get lucky power play carry just about the same for all of them i don't like to um generalize all of them for the single line so i'll just put them right down the middle all right so going on to the forward line here i'm not going to explain too much about it these were honestly just the generated ones that ea uh once you create a new lineup that's what you get the only thing, the only difference is I put them all on overload and not on crash to the net or behind the net. I like them to all do one single thing, which is to score goals. And uh, usually they're always really good, the, those lineup settings, what EA gives you. Not too bad, obviously, right? Going on to the defensive pairings here, I want them to pinch on plays. Uh, like I said, I don't like to hold back. I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. A lot of people were saying, uh, you know, I wasn't doing the sliders right for the team strategies. But honestly, just... I like to max it out, make sure that they're holding the line. That's why I'm trying to base this off. Hold line to max, right? Uh, cycle to max almost. I want them to be cycling the puck, making sure that they're always in the right position for a pass. Defensive pairing, just about the same. Defensive pairing three, just about the same. So anyways, that is just about it for this video in terms of my team build. I know this was quite a long video, but I want to quickly show you guys what I've been building for quite some time. I really do think it's worth the 20 minutes for me to explain what this team can offer as well as a couple new pieces that you can add to your team that uh, will definitely spice up your uh, win record by quite a bit. Anyways, that's about it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it took me quite a bit of time to make. Obviously with the 6 or 7 days I needed to build this team. It took quite some time so if you did enjoy it, please leave it a like and I will try to make another team build very soon. Leave in the comment box below. Uh, what team build you like to see next maybe a main team build i know some people want to see a very fast team build one with a really good body checking team build you guys can let me know in the comment box below i might just try making a team similar to that one anyways that's about it thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoy i'll catch you guys later see you guys that makes it one to nothing you gotta get that goal back come on i'm all playing you Oh, and there is a goal. I gotta score a glitch goal on tagging baby one time. The lamp of second. One to one, there it is.